Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson. And today, at last, we are back with a Harry Potter one, and we're doing Professor McGonagall. Dame Maggie Smith, as well, that wonderful teacher in the stories, uh, and, and it's just great. Like I say, we're going to do this fantastic portrait of Professor McGonagall. Before we go any further, please do like and subscribe. Tick the bell to be notified when new drawing lessons are going to come online. Again, that, I, I've just got so many that I can do. It's a joy. Thank you uh, to everyone who is enjoying these lessons. Again, here we have Ariana Grande, we have Harry Potter, we have Queen Bob from the Trolls. Now again, this covers a lot of things. We have Harry Potter in the How to Draw Harry Potter playlist. There's lots already. There's going to be many, many more. This one's from quite a while ago. People are still loving drawing Harry and there's so many things from the Harry Potter series that we can do. Ariana Grande, is in the How to Draw Portraits playlist. That's just specifically portraits. Harry is specifically Harry. But I said, we've done now uh, the BTS guys. And I said I would come back and we would be back after finishing. Oh, so there is Jungkook and V. We did those guys. Again, I've just got to be careful. Then we have got Sugar and RM. And they were, that was getting four of them done. And then we had Jimin. And we completed him. And then the last two, Jin and J-Hope. So again, you can see the multi-image. Please do share all of the, the how to draw lessons of the BTS guys with the BTS army. And the time lapses, it's great to put the little three minute overview together, but it's also fantastic to share with you the full portrait stuff. Now, we use the grid for these portraits. Now, he says, I thought I had that lurking, but I don't. Now, again, we for all of these, the BTS guys and Ariana Grande, I did the grid in a particular way that meant it was using the centre line and I was using the numbers, I was referencing numbers but I will just bring in this fella quickly we have, and it's in the description, how to draw Olaf I did this a very long time ago and I wish that I had done this kind of grid where we've got A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 down the side Again, that's a bigger grid, still on A4 paper, and I use A4 paper. But somebody asked, how could they, what are the dimensions to upscale the grid that I've used on all of my portraits so far? And we're going to use a new one today, like on Ariana Grande. How could they upscale it to A3? Basically making it bigger. Now, you multiply everything by 1.41, and or it's 141% bigger. It's Then you've got a load of maths. And it just makes things difficult because I'd got this little five centimetre border around the outside. I thought I'd actually got a sheet with it on. Anyway, that's disappeared. But what I've decided to do is go back to this grid like I used on Olaf, but using a two centimetre grid. Now, I'm going to remove Ariana and again the link for the old grid is in the community do the reference for the image for Maggie Smith uh, as Professor McGonagall is in the community tab on my YouTube channel link is in the description so do check that out we do have uh, and I've put the reference I've also put up the old grid a PNG a transparent PNG file but this is uh, my new so I've got some bits on the page. This is the new grid in pencil down. And it just makes sense. So here, if you look now, if you click in the link now, this is the new how to draw the grids video. So check it out, share it. This is what's going to be used. And again, in the community page, there's a PNG of this grid for A4. And that's, this is what I am going to be using now for the future because it makes it simpler for people who want to scale the drawing either smaller or larger and we've got a two centimeter grid and I've got A to J 
and 1 to 14. But it doesn't matter if you're using metric centimetres or inches imperial. So you could have, as long as you've got A to J, as long as you've got 10 squares that are one inch or one and a half inches or two inches, it doesn't matter what size you do because we're using the grid in proportion. So you could even have one centimetre squares going across 10 and then this last line is half. It's only one centimetre on this. So it would be half a centimetre if you were using a one centimetre grid. If you're doing four centimetre squares, it would be two centimetres, that end bit. And again, just draw the space at the bottom a little bit larger and you'll be fine. You could do it in inches. So you could have two inches and then the last line will be one inch wide. It makes, and I explain all this and you see me laying this grid down in real time. Again, I've done this in pen, but I've done this in pencil. Uh, to help you to grow and develop your skills. Now, I put these lines down so you can see them darker than you have to. And again, in the video, you will actually see me drawing it in felt at pen that you've seen on there but you'll see me actually drawing it very lightly with a 2h pencil and you just can't see it so you draw these lines lighter that makes things better and i explain a whole load more again in the banner there's just uh, a description about these actual two centimeter grids so a4 is 21 by 29.7 centimeters which is 210 by 20, 297 millimetres. And so every square from this corner we go over is two centimetres, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And that's what you need to do. But if you're using inches, you just go one, two, three, four inch. And that's how simple it is. You can then scale it to exactly how you need to do it. So brilliant opportunity to now develop many many drawing lessons i know this is a long introduction i do put the skip time at the beginning but now we are going to get on with doing our drawing and i have just found the old grid it's just flown off because it was underneath something else anyway now we come in with the trusty 2b pencil to draw professor mcgonagall and so we've got this new grid and this new way of drawing it Oh, and I said I didn't say in previously how to draw anything part one using shapes. We will use shapes to just grow and develop areas of this drawing. I, I use the shapes. You can just do it as a dot to dot, which you'll see in Olaf, but we use shapes to grow and develop this drawing. So now let's crack on and draw Professor McGonagall. So now we can see on the F line. If we come down to F7, it's a bit like playing battleships, right on this point here, we have got Dame Maggie Smith's nose. And we can come over and I'm just putting a little box in, that's the kind of side of a nostril, little curve there, that's uh, the actual nostril in the nose. If we go up and above, now we can come up between five and six and there we see we've got a triangle and then just to the right of the f6 we can see we've got the diagonal line and this comes down to a very bright highlight so i am being a little bit light but we've got a long rectangle there now that's the light going up uh, the highlight on the edge of a nose. Now I'm just putting a rectangle there going through the number five line and that's the crease in between her two eyebrows. Now again we can see we've just got this kind of sh shape. There's a, a curved line at the top and this is the shadow and in, in between the two eyebrows. Now this eyebrow between F and G above the five goes through the five line and it's very angular. So I'm just drawing a long thin rectangle. And then here we've got this that triangle of highlight on the side of the forehead. Now again, 
underneath the eye here we've got another little triangle coming off the eyebrow and we want this semicircle that comes right over to the F line kind of below the halfway point and joins and this is going to be her upper eyelid and then we just do the curve over now we've got that kind of crescent shape a banana shape then do the same going underneath down here we can show the lower eyelid again just this kind of u shape it comes around and then we can do that rectangle curved rectangle shape which is the bag underneath her lower eyelid the lower eyelid itself now her eyeball and we just got you can imagine you've got the ellipse there for the full eyeball and then the pupil inside. Now here we've just got this little kind of C shape that's between the 5 and 6 line and then we've got coming down I'm just going to draw a long line that comes down to the 8 and that's the edge of a face. Now we've got some little wiggle lines but we'll go over them a little bit later and then between the 8 and 9, we've got a little triangle there, and that's the edge of a chin. And then we've got the shape of a chin at the end, so I'm just pouring a little oval in. And then coming across here, we've got the triangle of a jaw, and then we've got that crease line going up to an ear, which is below the 7. And again, it's just another little triangle there. Now the ear is kind of diagonal so I'm just drawing a rectangle in first for where the shape of the ear is and right on the B6 line there we can see we've got this kind of C shape inside that rectangle. And we can just kind of curve the ear around and that works for us. Now we've got again above the ear goes up through the centre part so I'm just increasing that line over a little bit which is the edge of the ear rather than just a straight rectangle and then here we've got a little V shape a little triangle this is the dark and the edge of her hat comes up to the D4 line just comes through underneath and that's the edge of a hat coming up and over now we've got again I'm just carefully looking like an Olaf it's a bit like a dot to dot so yes we've got a rectangle but it's slightly curved and that's the shape going in there and we can see the curve comes over past the C so if we just put some dots in you can see there's got the C there and then you come over to A5 you can see the brim of the hat it's going to come across that way and then goes off right on the edge and then below the seven we've just got that line of the hat underneath where it comes around the back of a neck and a hair that how it's tied up behind again just you can just see a little triangle shape there where you've got that little bit of red hair showing and that helps us to build up that shape now again, if we come up to the E6 line, this is where her eye is now. And I'm just going to draw this kind of oval. So we've got the lower eye curving around, and the upper eye curving over, and comes down to that point there. Now her upper eyelid, we can see here, we've got a it, it is like a rectangle so that's a great shape to put in and then we've got the curve you can see like a D shape that comes around inside to the nose and then underneath just to the right of the E line coming under the six we can follow the shape and draw the lower eyelid underneath now 
need to just push that eye out into the tear duct a little bit more because right on the E line we've got the iris. The shape of the iris and then the pupil underneath and then we've got quite a strong highlight so I'm just drawing that little rectangle of highlight that we'll leave showing and we can accentuate that later. Now here coming up onto the five line we've just got a rectangle for the eyebrow it's like an inverted V and then you can see coming off the back I love doing this I hope you do this is an absolute joy uh, we've got our eyebrow coming off the back uh, I know it seems I don't know if you can see that but the hairs are up on my arm I really truly love sharing how to draw with you guys it's fantastic it's an absolute pleasure so again we're just putting these shapes in using the grid as reference points so we come up here now to just below the five line on the G and we've got another rectangle this is the hair off at the side it's in that highlighted bit now here straight away you've got the dark and you can see it's just a triangle it's just the underneath part of the hat going around the left hand side of a face we can see a very simple triangle and that comes down to there now again it's a little bit more of a detailed shape but you can see just a basic shape there and then above we can bring that rectangle down and that's that cover part there now on the F we've got a simple long record uh, shape just oh, it's, a, it's, it's a curved rectangle and it comes down through the a.4 and that's the kind of lower part of the brim of a hat where there's that kind of knitted braided part that sits at the bottom and then we've got the kind of funnel that comes off up to the d and then we come down by the side of the a to the two and then we've got this little triangle there now again that's not overly detailed we can build the detail up after so again on the eye up here we can see we've got a better triangle that actually comes down to there and then the triangle comes over and actually comes through the h lower than the four and that's how we just build the shapes up you're just using construction lines and again i must apologize i've not put the kind of block in front of my camera to stop my head so if my hair has been coming in all this again at the beginning i do apologize uh, but i don't think it has too much now we have dame maggie smith's pierced lips so coming down from underneath the nose in fact just coming off the edge here of the nose we've got a v shape and that's the crease line going down to a mouth and then we want the same we've got a v shape coming off there and that's the side and now we've got a lips so right on the f line on the eight we've got the lower lip so we've just got this little kind of u shape that comes around we've got the, the the lipstick bit inside but then you've got this shadow crease that comes off right to the corner so I'm just going to draw a straight line but we have got a little bit of a wiggle now just to the left of the F we've got a little V there and then we've got a triangle to the right and then a triangle coming down to the corner of the mouth again we want that lovely tight pursed lip a little triangle for the bit between the upper lip and the bottom of the nose again we've just got some little crease lines in the face and coming off down by the chin we've got a crease line and we've got this curved shape to underneath the chin and this will be an interesting drawing because she's got so many lovely creases in her eyes uh, and around her face so again we've got this little v-shape underneath this eye 
you can kind of see that edge going off. Now we've got a rectangle there which gives us that light part and that's going to come over. Now coming down from a neck again we've got this incredible large rectangle so here we can see it comes down through the 9 and to the below the 10 and this is like a kind of high collar and it's in the shadow and then between D and E we're just above the 11 line so that's that kind of rectangle for that one and then coming down to the 13 we've got the front of her blouse underneath her robes kind of jacket and again this is a long rectangle if we come up on the 11c we can see where that comes across it just kind of runs in parallel we need to come to the 13 and now we've got that rectangle shape there now on this we'll do the collar on this side and again this this goes up and actually goes through the 10b so you can see we've got that goes up to the neck that's it's in shadow but we can just build these lines in and there on the b between 10 uh, 11 and 12 we've just got the edge of the collar that goes up and we need to bring that now down all the way to the bottom and then the shoulder goes off to the edge again we've got some creases I'm just putting little shapes in there's a V there on that highlight diagonal line above the 14 we've got that other crease that's underneath now on her left side of her robes we come above the 10 we can see how that kind of goes up to where the collar is about halfway and then just comes down through the G line between 11 and 12 and then goes down to the bottom now we want to build that collar up as well and then this comes down lovely And then we want a left shoulder that comes off so here we've got a triangle you can see we've got that triangle that goes across those two squares there and then it just curves down now again there's lots of patterning on these and, and the braiding and you can use the grids to just indicate where they are very quickly again I'm just putting some long thin rectangle lines in just to indicate quite quickly where that pattern needs to be. And we've got a little fold by the edge. Then below the 12 line, that's where I'm at. Like I say, you just keep looking at your reference. And this helps give your hand and eye coordination a real boost so again don't think that this is cheating in any way shape or form uh, and I do mention in and if you look at Olaf you see John Constable he used grits British landscape artist Supremo and there's so many different people in history who've, who've used grits so here we've just got I'm just putting some little oval shapes in like little wiggly wiggly worms or coffee beans really there's two there and then in between they come up there's two in this square and I explain how hundreds of years ago Canaletto used to go out into the streets and areas of Venice with a little box camera obscura and he'd set it up and then just start drawing because he got a lens on the front and a mirror inside and a glass plate on top he put tracing paper on the top kind of shielded it with a couple of boards 
and he just basically traced what was in front of him and then he went back to his studio and projected it. And that's hundreds of years ago. So it's kind of let a cheat. Uh, again, don't let people make out that you are doing something wrong. So again, now we've got this, we can see a little bit more of the detail on this side. Coming down to the 13 line. And again, I'm just whacking in some shapes quite quickly because these details are your foundation and here we've got wiggly line quick wiggly line again these are very very quick so on the 13 on the B again I'm just indicating the direction that these lines are going so then you come above under the 12 we'll put all the coffee beans in and everything with the more detailed outline next now I'm doing the same on this side just indicating there's a banana shape for that crease little rectangle for that crease rectangle for that crease going up to the neck Again, just some creases, a little triangle. And that's looking pretty good. That's just a very, very quick way of getting the outline down using very basic shapes on top of the grid. So just sharpening my pencil to get a decent point. Now I'm back in with uh, the 2B pencil. And we're going to put the detailed line in and we're going to start with Professor McGonagall's left eye. So we're on and I'm going to use this paper to stop my hand from smudging all the drawing. And so the eye is on the F line between five and six. And it starts, it's a little bit below the halfway point. And you see we've got this curve. Again, I'm going to be drawing these lines quite dark. So this curves over. And then the top of the eyelid curves. Comes over to this V point. Then we've got the edge of the eyeball. And the iris curves down and around and then we want pupil we've got this fantastic underneath piece of an eye and again we can just indicate some of the eyelashes going off onto that side now, like on this side, there is a little bit of a highlight. So I'm just drawing a little shape to protect the highlight in the green eyes. And I'm putting in a pupil. Now, the green eyes are very light. I've just filled that in very carefully. Now, the curve above, we can see We've got this fantastic curved shape that makes this kind of, it's like a sea that's fallen over, a crescent shape. It comes over, but it folds off. It doesn't come right to the F line. It just comes across a little bit and then starts its curve up and over or coming down. Now, her eyebrow that we've got above I'm not going to press on as dark. That comes all the way over to about there and then follows the trajectory down to the edge of a nose to the left of the F line. And we can see where we've got the curve of the nose starts to come down underneath and it's just above the, the six line on the horizontal 
and we've got this fantastic highlight. So I'm not going to draw the nose all the way down, so you kind of reverse drawing out. So we're going to come down and curve around where we've got this bag under her eye. Now again, I'm not pressing on too dark because I don't want too dark a line there. And then we've got the curve going up to underneath the eyeball. But we now need to extend the eyeball down. And then we've got this fantastic curve with highlight on of the lower eyelid. And that comes up. And this is where we've got the tear duct right in the corner. And the tear duct's got a highlight, so I'm just indicating where that is. Then we've got this fantastic kind of vein bloodline in her eye. Now, we follow the trajectory round underneath. We've got that fantastic thick line of highlight for the upper part of a lower eyelid. Now, the edge of a head, she's got the curve coming up to the five line. Curves to where the eyebrow is, and then we just want a slight curve going up. And then it goes through the four, right the way up to underneath the hat. And then we've got the hair on the edge. And that just comes down and follows inside where the hat is. And already you can see we've got a really nice eye starting to look out at us. Now if we come over and do McGonagall's right eye of Gryffindor, we're on the E line. We want this curve to come over And then it comes down to the corner point. The edge of the iris. Again, I'm kind of drawing it soft. I'm just going to soften this one off a little bit. And then we want the pupil in, leaving that highlight up at the top. Again, I'm just indicating the iris very lightly. Now, going to the tear duct, we've got that line that comes round, comes down onto the six the inner part next to the eyeball of the upper eyelid. See how that curves across. And again, just like on this side, we've got this fantastic ledge of the upper part of a lower eyelid. And that curves around, comes up. And then we've got this little kind of, almost a heart shape, and that's the tear duct in that corner. And then above, we've got a dark crease line that comes over. And then we've got the shape of the upper eyelid and the eye socket on this D shape that comes over. And there we have the shadow going up to the curve over. In the upper eyelid and we've got more of the crease lines coming over and this is going to be you know something after the BTS guys drawing someone with creases in the face is going to be an absolute change and this is the thing you're learning drawing techniques to adapt you're making marks with a pencil and that's what you've got to develop so here now come down off the eye, we've got the 
bag under the left eye. That curve. Then we've got that V shape there. So now we come to her nostril and the side of her nose and her right nostril. And we're on the seven line. We've got the curve that comes around. This is this C shape. Going up into the square and that's where it joins the cheek. And then we've got this little curve over that comes to the nose and it's just to the left of the F line but above the 7, ever so slightly. Darker at the top and a little bit of shade underneath. Now, nose going off. We can see we've got this curved shape. And then the bit that comes down got the shadow that comes underneath and then this little thin triangle that goes down to her lips and then we've got the very edge of the left nostril just comes down and touches the seven and then we've got this little bit of shadow that's coming off to the edge and already you can see we can we've got very distinctive eyes starting to look out at us. So now we want a cheek that comes down below the six and then it curves across and then just starts to go vertical. And you can see how the line is in line with the corner of her eye and the edge of her eye socket. Just off vertical it comes down below the seven and then we get another little kink and then it comes down again to above the eight and then we get another little kink that starts to come right across for her chin. And now we want the chin it needs to come a bit lower. I say we just put those shapes in. So the chin is going to come down just above the nine line. We've got that shape that goes under, comes to the E. We can just join that up. And then we've got shape of a cheek that comes off. So here we've got this line that comes down and curves back up to this dark little area here right on the edge of a cheek next to the upper part of a collar. And then that collar comes up, goes through the C below the 8, off to the back and then comes down. Like I say we went into that shadow. And we've got a curve goes up to a lower earlobe. And we've got the curve of the ear. That comes up. Goes up to about the halfway point. So we need to direct that and the, the black will cover off for us. So again, we're just on, on the B coming up to the 6. We've got that curve that comes up and then we've got a hair coming across the top of the ear. And then halfway between B and C, we've got the edge of her ear as it joins the side of her face. And then we've just got a little crease line that comes down. And we've got the entrance to her ear canal, this C shape. That comes over. Curve that comes around and under. And then we've got this little V shape that's a bit fuzzy and that's a hair underneath the hat. 
and we can follow the brim of the hat. As it comes up above the forehead, curves across through the G. This is kind of very shadowed. So I'm going to come right the way out, just past the eye above the two. And then we can follow the lines down where they come through and then come to the eye on the side. And we've got the lines for the brim of the hat. So now following the edge we come across to the H and it's just underneath, it's above the construction line, the triangle that we did because it's just slightly curved. And that comes across, if we come above the forehead on the F it's above the 3. And that helps us to draw curve line of the brim of a hat coming down and then we've got that edge that goes around. That's looking absolutely lovely. So now I'm just going to sharpen my pencil because I want to do ellipse but I don't want to have a thick line. So we're starting right next to the F We've got that little V and then it just curves over a little bit and we've got the corner crease, the edge of a mouth. Now underneath the V we've got the centre line between her upper lip and lower lip but it's slightly curved and then curved again to the edge. And then her pursed lips on the top of her upper lip. We've got that curve that comes over. It pretty much it, it's just to the right of the E line. So now we've got the lipstick bit. And that goes just through the F a little bit further over on the left hand side than it is on the right and it curves up and goes over to the corner of the mouth and we've got that slightly curved bit going over and then we've got this shadow line underneath we've got these fantastic creases in the lips that will help us with the detail when we come to the shading afterwards. Now, the curve underneath the chin is in that crease line, it's just below the eight. And this is where using the grids will help you with all the creases. And then the crease line coming off and side of a mouth we've got that triangle going up to the nose. We've got, so that's the triangle crease and we've got one, two, three. Got one, two, three, going up off the lip. Now on the seven line on the D, this is where we can see we've got this crease coming down. And again, we can kind of wing it with some of them, but it just means you've got the right place for a number of your creases in the face. And that's a good thing. But there you can see we've got a good outline just of Professor McGonagall. So now quickly, because everything else is done for us very easily, we can 
go over I'm using the soft of the pencil here we've got a kind of c-shape going up to the brim of the hat we can see how this comes off but it's just a little bit wobbly because it's soft fabric you, know, you don't want a solid straight line of the hat going up again coming down just from the right of the D that comes down and we've got curve it comes over through the D towards the C above the two bit of shadow then through the F and the E got that shadow on the edge that comes down cross that's the top of the hat now coming down on the collar this needs to come down and around this is going to be a stunning cracking drawing to work on again now we want we've got this dark edge the edge of a collar coming down of a cloak and then we just got to like say the, the embroidery patterning just gives us some little nobbles as it comes down her arm um, and again I'm just looking and I'm seeing where I can put the shade of the kind of knobbly bits <clears throat> technical term for embroidery that is and uh, embellishments that's better and this will help when we put the detail in as we come down like I say these are they kind of like coffee beans little shapes that's a bit more of a banana shape you, know, you can think of maggots little worms coffee beans it just helps you with placing the shapes quickly now again I'm doing these really quickly and impressionistically because uh, I just want to get this up as a real-time drawing lesson and so we've got this edge that comes down comes below the 10 line and then that goes off on the shoulder and here we've got this incredible dark shadow so now I'm going to use the flat of the pencil to indicate where the shadows are rather than the dark line because it's the fabric so now below the 12 got that triangle there curve of that fabric that comes over again it's just indicating where the creases are coming up through the 12 And again I'm going to do these even the, the the fabric I will do quickly and impressionistically if you want to do it more photographically it will take a lot of hours but again you can just put these lines in quite quickly so now again we've got these shapes so below the 11 I've got a kind of coffee bean shape so on there coming below the 12 another one in the middle it's just kind of wiggly two layers of tracking embroidery in between and that goes off up into the shadows then we've got the second layer little kind of wiggly bit there comes down we've got that V so there's the tracking and it comes down little you see shape there 
and that comes over again we've got the tracking comes through of the 13 got another c shape there comes down all the way so again oh, nearly through my pencil again soft side of the pencil for this shadow line Again, I'm just loosely indicating now the kind of coffee beans and the tracking as that comes over. And that's in shadow. There we have a good full outline down of Professor McGonagall. Now we need to just rub out everything. So I've got my Mars plastic eraser. I'm going to rub out quickly all of the large areas. And this is a really difficult thing to do like on the, the detail bits I'm going to lose loads of drawing if I try and go around a face because it's so big you need to be oh, nearly through my pencil again careful well this is where if, if you use a 2H pencil and draw the lines very lightly you can rub them out so much easier again I do I love doing this because it, it it means you can actually see all the construction lines and the working out now there's loads all down here which is why I'm now oh, I've got the larger one that's a big area and I'm holding the paper with this to stop uh, the paper from plinging off because I've only got little bits of masking tape holding it on. And again, I do that so that you can see it complete. So again, this now. I can come in the face and inside the hat and actually get a lot of the lines out from the grid quite quickly because there's more fine tuning with this size of eraser and then I've got the electric one I keep saying I'm going to try and get a manual one but I may not I may never end up getting one because all this lot works so just use the equipment that I've got and and then obviously I use the putty rubbers. So again, in between these lines now, down the edge, it's just very easy to erase these out and I don't lose that much of all of my construction lines of my drawing. Even though it will rub out a little bit, I'm not losing that much. So I can get in between these beans and little maggots and worms that I've drawn. So again, on the chin, get rid of some of those construction lines up the side of the cheek. So again, it's now a bit difficult in and around the face. So now I'm just gonna sweep that off quickly. And then come back in with my eraser, electric eraser, and I can now just pull out these bits in between the creases in McGonagall's face and around her eyes that would basically disrupt the drawing, say underneath. And even though it will rub out a little bit, I'm not losing too much. Right next to the face. Up the edge. 
and inside the ear. Now again, I can now sweep that off. And there you can see, we've got a clean, full drawing outline of McGonagall. So now back in with the 2B pencil and we're going to fill in, start the shading, just a tone across McGonagall's face. Now I'm using the 2B pencil but I'm also <clears throat> Putting this down a little bit darker than I would ordinarily because we have got very good contrasting lights. So whereas like with the BTS guys and Ariana Grande because the skin was so smooth and we had a very small area of highlight I actually didn't I, I went all the way over so I'm leaving carefully where the paper is fully ex uh, the highlight is fully exposed I'm leaving the paper just to leave that highlight showing as much as possible and this is where the construction lines work for us. So you can see we're filling in the nostril and then we're coming up the nose. You can see how all of that there up to that highlight is shaded in. You can just fill in again these shapes of this little triangle on the cheek. And then on the top of that lip, upper lip, the underneath of the upper lip, and then the lower lip, and then we've got coming around the chin, so we've got the shade at the bottom. And the curve coming, and again we've got this strong highlight on this edge here, so we're just leaving that showing. And then all the rest of it, including apart from the highlight in the eye, so I'm going to fill in the eyeball and just fill in these shapes and these areas <clears throat> with the flat of the pencil underneath the eye. And already you can see Dame Maggie Smith starting to come off the page. Now, there's the back of the neck. Not coming up on the cheek and around the eye. So before I smooth this in, we can actually increase some of the shadows around it anyway. And this is really lovely. So again, we've got the dark coming underneath the hat. Got the lines coming down underneath the cheek, the side of the nose. Going up into the eye socket, we can curve that around. That's already looking really lovely. Underneath the bottom of the nose. We've got that shadow coming off. 
corner of the mouth going up to the cheek. Again, this is what you can just do with, with cross hatching. You can build up the tone very quickly. That crease line going up. Again, this is all just with the 2B pencil. Shade in the ear. And I'm just resting my little finger on the page, off the actual, on the surface that I'm drawing on. It's allowing me to pivot backwards and forwards quite freely. Again, the neck, we can darken this down a bit more. And there, straight away, we've got three dimensional aspects onto McGonagall's face. Now, I'm going to come in with some kitchen roll, just fold it up, and I can just push this over onto the highlighted bits and then it just fills it, fills it in and it'll just pull the highlights off. Very quickly. Now again, all around face. I'm just smoothing it down. And I've got a really good, you can see there straight away, you've got a really good general tone. Again, bringing the tone of the eyeball down. And if I just come in with the clean putty rubber, where we've got the strongest highlights, so here going up, side of the nose, that part over on the cheek, just now dabbing. Again, I'm dabbing next to the tone rather than having a sharp line. Then we've got the highlighted bits and the creases on the forehead, little bit of dabs on the eyebrow. Underneath the right eye. And you can see already we've got really lovely three-dimensionality in that area. So I've just pulled the rubber up to a clean part again. We're doing right on the front, on the edge of a forehead. Again, just dabbing some highlights coming over the forehead. And then edge of the cheek, upper part of a lower eyelid. Okay, I'm just pulling out those highlights in the pupil. Then on. edge of her face, coming down by her mouth and then strong bit on the chin and there you can see straight away that's Dame Maggie Smith, that's McGonagall looking out at us looking rather fierce and stern in the loving way that she is top of the lip underneath, down on the lip. Now again, that's very quick. And we've got that half tone shadow detail actually down and in, and that's, it just looks really, really lovely. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back in with the kitchen roll. And I'm just using my right hand so as I can see, otherwise my left hand. Yeah, kind of, I don't want to go onto the, there we go. Now, because we've got such bright on the face, we want this to stand out. I am going to use a 4B pencil. Let's just check. And we've just put in that hair quickly. But around the face, yeah, we could just go in and start doing the details. I'm just wanting to fill in some tone. It will give me a reference point as we're building up the tones in McGonagall. Then we'll make this really black with a, an 8B pencil later. But it means we can do the work building up the dark. Yeah, you know, this is like when we put the this has gone so quick. I'm just making this decision now. Again, I don't follow a formula. You can just go, right, I'm going to do the eyes and then I'm going to do the nose I'm going to do, and you can build the detail out. It's a complete choice as you develop your skills. But to get these techniques and these tones down so that you guys can see quickly, having some tonal contrast next to the area we're working on on the face is actually very good. So this is the hair by the back of a collar. coming up and this is this is like the brim underneath the hat so again I'm just filling this in quickly and you can see already that the face is now starting because of the the darkness of the tone that we've put in McGonagall's face is already starting to look thinner not as three-dimensional Again, I'm using the soft flat side of the pencil. Just pressing on enough to give me some tone. So again, coming over the hat now. This is all going to be very, very dark a little bit later. And then the lighter tones, in fact, we can bring that dark over and around. Just filling in the brim. kind of knitted band around the base of a hat and then we've got the tall part of her witch's hat going up. I did hear something from history uh, quite interesting about the witch's hat actually and the people who used to wear pointed hats that became the witch's hat apparently again check out verified uh, historical information 
yourself do not believe everything that you hear or read on the internet do what is called due diligence to go and find out and it was ladies in towns and villages who used to brew beer for the locals and so the brew masters or well not brew masters the brew ladies the brewer experts were ladies at the time and you spotted them through a crowd because of the pointed hat. And you went and got your beer. So again, you can see that's now framing off uh, McGonagall. But eventually, men figured out that they liked beer so much and they could make money from it that they took over doing, doing beer and the brew ladies with the tall pointed hats somehow it then got associated with witches which I find rather fascinating so now the top collar coming down underneath McGonagall's Head and neck area, we can just indicate that in quickly. And this is why you need to be careful, this is why you use a piece of paper, otherwise, you're going to put your hand on there, you're just going to keep on smudging it, and your hand will get filthy. I say I'm balancing my left hand on top of my right hand while I'm just filling this fast area in now. And that's looking rather good. Again, just bringing some down. Again, there's no real highlights on this. So we may as well quickly Filling in a nice kind of mid tone. And this area is going to be darker, and this area is going to be darker still. But got the dark coming down there. And again, we can dark, this will get darkened down a lot later. You can see now McGonagall's face has kind of become thinner inside. And this is another reason why I don't just follow a formula. You just do what works. You follow a progression. You learn skills and techniques that will allow you to produce your drawings to the best of your ability. And you just respond to the drawing as you go along. And it's just a case of building up layers. So now I've filled all of that in. I'm just going to do the same now. I'm just smoothing that pencil down so that, I mean, you can see that's really dirty already. You're actually pulling some of the pencil off. It means you've got no bright area of the paper showing through. Again, that's the kind of velvety fabric on the front of a blouse or dress. Looks really, really lovely. So there already you can see we've got quite a dynamic picture. 
of McGonagall starting to come together. Now back in with a 4B pencil and what I am going to do is like I've done this <clears throat> again I would do this later but because of this strong highlight here I want some background tone. Now we did this on Luna uh, we actually filled in the background like we did the full black uh, of behind Voldemort the Dark Lord so while we're doing this it's just wise to fill in so again I'm using the flat of the 4B pencil I'm not going quite to the full edge of the paper and then here we just need to be careful as we're coming up to McGonagall's face so it doesn't matter when, when you're going over the hat but when you come to the face just be careful again we'll pull out the highlights using the putty rubber but it means we can do the shading quite quickly but already now I mean just look at that McGonagall is starting to leap off the page because that highlight is the paper so we've darkened the paper down and it makes a stand out and this is what's going to build our drawing up a little bit so again I'm still using the flat of the pencil not really twisting it over now we've got darker tone coming out by the side of the heart a bit darker up there you know this is all out of focus fuzziness in the background and you can do you can either try and copy exactly what is in the photo or you can just kind of indicate some wispy smoky bits it's up to you but again this is the joy of drawing so again I'm not really copying what's going on down there that's lighter behind the neck and so it, it's just down to you now again you can see how dirty that is I actually want a cleaner part because I want tone to be with just the pencil that's on the paper. Again, I've just been very careful going right next to McGonagall's face. Again, yes, I am using the opposite hand I normally use. Just have a go. And that means that you're not like here now it doesn't matter about going over the shoulder because we'll pull that off a little bit later with the detail and we can go over the heart I'm going to the edge again you can see I can just soften that right up to the heart and it doesn't matter because when we crisp up the heart later it will completely stand out again now by the back of the hat you can go over the back of the neck and there you can see now already we've got absolutely fantastic image started to look like McGonagall. Now we could have worked a lot more on the face and then added this after but this just gives us more to work with so again I'm just darkening this tone down by a chin and up the side of a face and it just makes the highlights stand out better so you can see that fuzzy bit there is really working well for us 
So that's rather good. I'm rather pleased with that. Again, this is getting really filthy. So we might need a clean section of that in a bit. But there you can see we've got a really lovely image coming together of McGonagall. So now coming back in with the 2B pencil, just sharpen it. I need this paper so that I don't smudge and we're going to start and we're going to start detailing up around her eyes. So again I'm now we've got coming across the eye here from where the edge of her eyelashes are coming out just indicate the eyelashes a bit more we've got this dark line that comes across but it's causing a shadow that's coming over we want to take that down to the tear duct it's nice and red so it's dark here but lighter here so don't press on too hard edge of the tear duct vein in her eye lower part of the eyeball just a little bit of shadow at the bottom at the top we need to just darken that eyeball down and the iris again I'm being very careful to leave that little highlight and then we've got a lovely lighter tone in her iris coming around and a little shape there that I'm leaving a little flex now I'm going to try there we go I'm just softening the edge of that iris off going to come in with the dirty putty rubber and just pull up that little highlight in the eye. Now this is the 4B pencil I'm just pressing in where the dark is of the pupil and already you can see that eye compared to everything else is now starting to really lift off the page. Now we could work all around that eye there. And I'm just using the 4B pencil, just softening that top bit, dark right on the edge of the iris. Again, I'm just using the soft tip and then just you can see already that's just framing that edge. I'm coming back in with the 2B pencil just so as it's, it's you've got a little bit more control because it's not so soft. We can just gently crisp up that edge of a face coming down. Now if we do the same on McGonagall's right eye, so again we've got the curve coming over which is darker with her eyelashes. Again I'm just softening it up and down just kind of slightly fuzzing it caused by her eyelashes and again there's doing the same on this side just fuzzing it a little bit and then the edge of the iris again soft and fuzzy I'm not pressing on hard and sharp I'm not twisting the pencil because I want that softer 
dark outer line of her iris. And then darkening the pupil down up to the highlight above. And then the upper part of the iris is a little bit darker because of the eye. Then we can just darken that tone down. Again, soften the edges carefully. And we just leave that highlight showing. And already now you can see we've got McGonagall's eye just lifting off. Again, not as dark, we want the tear duct shape right next to the eye, softening that shadow next to it. And then we've got creases that are coming right over. So we've got this fantastic dark crease again, just being soft. As that creates the shape or putting the lines in that we need. Like we've got that one there, we've got a number of lines on the right side. And then this, remember we drew the D shape earlier. This comes all the way around. And it's just nice, soft shapes. And this is how versatile the 2B pencil is. And we've got this darker shape off the back of her eye. Coming off into the corner of her eye socket. And that darker tone goes up to that curve that's going over and above. And underneath the highlighted part of a lower eyelid We've got that darker shape. And already you can see we're, we're getting the line and the form of her eye standing out. Inside the lower eyelid, right next to the eyeball. And then on the right hand side of her eyeball, because it's curved, it's brighter here than it is here. You can have more shade underneath the upper eyelid. Again, darken this side down. The lower eyelid coming up to where the tear duct is. I'm basically just cross hatching, but softly and gently. I'm not pressing on to get a dark, dug in shape, uh, sharp line. Again, just building that up around the tear duct. <laughs> Curve of her upper eyelid. It's fantastic how this comes down. Soften that darker part. We've got this little shape, this kind of little leaf shape underneath the eyebrow. So the eyebrow comes up then goes over very thin and slow. And 
then we want dark in that crease coming out to the light just allowing the transition to just soften out towards the highlight then we've got this crease going up the forehead and you can see where you see the nose comes around and then the curve you can see we've got this curve that comes over and you can follow the trajectory of the to the top of the right eye and then we've got this crease that comes up and one off her eyebrow and already you can see we're getting more definition on McGonagall's eyes building up the tone slowly so again just bringing the dark over a little bit to that slightly highlighted bit so now a right eyebrow drawing in the direction that the eyebrows would grow and that's what makes it that little bit more real but there's not a lot of defining lines because they're just kind of very shaded in because of the shadow and the intensity of the light and you can see that we've got it's much lighter underneath so that's kind of a bit stark that eyebrow is above but if we just fill in some of the shade there and there's a bit of shade coming down just darken above it see the eyebrow just then starts to become part of McGonagall's face so now want to build a little bit of tone down around underneath the eye down the side of the nose so we're doing the shade now right on the bottom of the nose and the nostrils we've got the C shape first And then we've got, you can see here, there's like a D of shade, or it's like a sail on a little sailing boat at the front. You've got this little shark fin, really. No, that's a of shade that comes down and then curves underneath. And that goes up. So the bit on a forehead and again just doing this kind of cross hatching on top of the bit that you smoothed you can see it's just really starting to give us more three-dimensionality again so when we put all the dark around the face it really just made this look very thin and pale and this is what you do you just take your time and build the tone up. Now again, I've got no solid line here. Your brain is going to make up the edge of the nose. And this is just a trick of drawing. And you let the highlight do the work for you. That's going up onto a forehead. Join some of that tone up. That's looking really, really lovely. So now we've got the shade underneath the nose. Again, I'm just softening.
the edges so as we, you know we've not got too many crisp edges again coming down following the, the direction that we did with this kind of shark fin it's a little bit more shade coming down to the cheek and then by the lips again the crease on the cheek on the left hand side and then we've got a tiny little bit going off to the edge there And now I can see I've got crease lines in a forehead. I'm just indicating those in and going up over the forehead and over the left eye. And we've got this kind of, it's a bit like a butterfly, but if you think of a W there, there's a head there. That's just some shade. Then obviously it needs to be darker up at the top. Now you can see Professor McGonagall really starting to look out of the page at us. You boy, Potter. Not really good at Scottish, female Scottish accents especially, so. Darken the side of the nose down. But you can imagine, you know, Weasley, you know, having a go yelling at them all and trying to bring them into line. Again some shadow coming off the nose, coming down above the cheek. And this is where we'll work with the putty rubber to bring in the details. So I will pull out on these creases, they'll, they'll pull them out and make them much sharper. Now I'm going to come in with the 4B pencil and just put in the dark inside her right nostril. In that little curved shape. But again I'm softening the edge and that will literally make a nose stand out. And that's how simple it is. So if we now do the same darkening the upper lip down, she's got some reflected highlights in there. So I'm just putting a bit of a mid-tone in. This is the 2B pencil. And then we can really bring that dark center line across. And then just draw some of the lines on again soft at the top that's the shape of her lips being pursed and thin we've got the crease lines in the lower lip where we've got the lipstick and it's lighter on the bottom of the apart from up on this corner here. So we can just bring that over. And leave the highlight on the right hand left hand side. Right hand side of the paper, I was about to say, as I'm looking at it. But again, already now you can see her lips are really lifting the drawing off for us. Shadow underneath. As that goes across the side and we've got 
corner of the mouth, how it, the shadow goes down, and then you've got a little crease line next to it. And then on the corner of the cheek, you can see how the angle comes off here where it cuts across, and you've just got a little bit of line showing in. It just indicates some creases in the light on that side. Again, we'll lift that out again with the putty rubber. Now, curve underneath the nostril, and this is a 2B pencil, so it's not too dark. Going right underneath. And then quickly the bottom of a chin. Again, we've got a strong line coming off the side of the mouth. So I'm just softening the edge of the mouth. We've got that triangle crease coming down from the mouth, line coming off, one above. And there's just some wiggly creases coming out, but we've got this very strong one here. It's coming off and across. And now I'm just building up that shadow at the bottom. Again, you've got the C shape coming around the chin. And you just keep looking and you're building the tone up and it's you can see this highlighted bit here just coming through and the cheek coming down the tone on the cheek coming down to the jaw and we're just building this up quickly just to darken a lot of the tone down again it's soft the pencil is soft so I'm getting a nice blurred line especially going up to the ear that shadow underneath the ear and I can darken the neck down and I can still see the detail of the line that I need now again I'm now just fully cross hatching in the right hand side of the face and over the ear. It's going to go darker still, indicating in that C point area. And there we have McGonagall really starting to look off the page. I hope you're having fun with this because I'm really enjoying it. So now we're coming back in with a 2B pencil on McGonagall and I'm sorry about the slightly funny audio. Uh, hopefully it is now all rectified and it kind of got a little bit of doubling up on some of the words. I'm sorry. Uh, I say that's just a software issue, but we are now going to just build up more of the darker tones on Professor McGonagall. So again, we're working around the bottom of a chin. And as I, as you squint, you can see where you need to just build some up. And I'm just going slowly. Like I say, we've got this diagonal coming across a forehead. Comes over to the top of her eyebrow. Then we've got a C shape here of lighter tone that's around the corner of her eye socket. So again, just indicating carefully using the soft side of the pencil and then from the side of a cheek her mouth going up to the side of a cheek and 
then this dark tone underneath. Right eye. Then coming down the nose. Again, this is just building the tone up, the central part of it, in between her eyes. Bit there going up. So again, I'm now just using the end of the 2B pencil. Just to fill in some of tone in the highlight. Again, the tone down the nose, just soften it as it comes up to the front part of the nose. And coming down around Above and below her eye, inside the eye socket. You can see how it, we're just getting more tonal variety now. And we're just building this up nice and slowly. Again, I don't know, I don't set out and go think, oh right, this I'm going to get this done in X amount of hours, minutes or anything else. We just work until we get the drawing done. The creases down the side of her face and up the cheek. So again, I'm just drawing and I'm just looking. I can see like these creases in the cheek. And then this little bit underneath her eye. And we can just indicate the crease lines coming over, crease coming off the side of her nose, just coming over, and creases coming off the corner of her eye and around her eye socket. Now, we need some darker tone in the ear. So I'm going to come back in with the 4B pencil because it's a bit softer and we can get a darker tone a little bit quicker. So here we've got this C shape. It's much darker at the bottom where you got the entry to the ear canal. We can fill that tone in. Then we've got a slightly darker tone above, but leaving that little kind of highlighted bit there. Soften around the edge of the ear. Then the top part of the ear. where this comes down then got darker tone to the back of the neck and underneath the ear and again I'm not going for the full darker tones just yet and we'll do that with an 8B pencil so here we're just coming up on the cheek. And again, the hair that comes down the side of her head. Using the flat, soft side, because it's all slightly fuzzy in the shadow. And that's actually really nice. So again, underneath the hat. Just bringing that line over. It's just soft 
and we get that dark, darker transition underneath. Again, I'm just going just nice and quickly, keep looking at the reference. You can see where you just need to build up the shadow. So here, coming across the front of her forehead. Now with McGonagall, because she's so angular in her face and her features, we don't need to use the brushes. We can, or a cotton bud. The pencil's doing a lot of the work for us. Again, that darker shade inside the nose. It's just really making that nose stand out now. Here, coming up the cheek. And we can just indicate some darker tones inside the, the skin, the shape of the head and the jawbone. And that comes down, shadow comes down the cheek. And again, I'm just using the flat of the pencil, I'm not turning it. And it's just doing the work for me. Side of an earlobe. And then we've got this dark on the side of her cheek, right up next to the ear. Just gives it that little bit more shape and you can see the ear really taking form there now. And now that highlighted bit is really bright. So you can just go over with the pencil and you just soften it down. You can see we've now got that highlighted curve coming round. And that's absolutely fantastic. That's looking really lovely. So again, the shadow around the bottom of her chin, leaving a little reflected highlight underneath. Edge of her mouth. Again, we're just building up slowly and carefully. Just adding little bits of more tone as we need it. Again, just increasing the eyebrow a little bit, making that stand out. The shadow that's inside the eye. And that's really, really lovely. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the blending stump. And just like I use the soft side of the pencil, if we use this, we can just push the pencil around a little bit and we soften some of the tones and the lines. And it gives us really nice transition. So again on a face, coming down a cheek, down onto a chin. But then where we come round onto the side of a cheek underneath this eye we can just push the pencil round and it just looks really really nice and gives us that softer skin look and this bit on a nose
coming up the side here of the corner of it. Eye socket. Now that's looking absolutely fantastic, but what we need to do is come in with an 8B pencil and it's very soft. So it's going to go down very, very quickly, but we do have a lot of dark to fill in. And so where we've got this soft edge coming on the brim of a hat and being very careful and pivoting from my shoulder, I'm not resting my hand on the paper. But this will start to give us now the clarity that we need to finish off the detail on McGonagall's face. So again, I'm just swirling it around, getting that soft transition underneath. And if you press on too hard, you'll just snap the nib because it's so, like especially side on like this, it's such a soft pencil. But I want these soft transitions first, rather than coming in and just going for the full dark. So here from the ear down the back of a neck. And we've got that little bit of hair showing in the shadow. So we want dark underneath. Going to the edge. And just leave a little bit showing inside, just not too dark. There already you can see we're framing McGonagall's face and it's looking really sharp already. So we want the brow of the hat, the brim of the hat comes over to about there. And see how it frames it up. And so now I'm just filling in a lot of this dark. I, I, I'm doing this very quickly and but I really like scratching into the paper. I don't mind that, I don't mind the burnished kind of tone and the shine that you see when you really press in with the soft 8B pencils. I think it's really, really lovely. Like I say, one kind of sharp and nib point, I'm getting close to the wood now. Nearly done all that area, but there's a lot of black on this. And it's going to go down very quickly. Now you can see that's framing up McGonagall's face for us very, very well. So again, I'm being careful to not cover too much with my hand you know so I'm working around I should have done this bit first really but it just shows you can you can just work around the image whichever way you want to so now we've got this hair and we've got the highlighted bit but we've got this soft edge going into the hat brim
and then putting the dark all the way up the outline of the hat and this is where again I'm being quite expressive in a way with the pencil marks to just fill it in really quickly <sighs> but when we put this on like when we filled in the hair on the BTS guys or it then frames the face so you can see how much darker you need to make other areas darken the shadows to give it the right form that it needs and this is just building up your tonal values around the drawing as you go so again now just bringing the hat up and we can see I've got I'm going to come to about here and then it's got to go over there and then we've got a dark coming over there again here but just using the pencil putting broad lines down and you see I'm not using the side otherwise I'll just snap the nib off the tip had just come straight off and that's looking so rich and dark I do hope you're enjoying this Again, sorry about the audio. That's just a technical issue. Uh, it's never done that before, but yeah, I've recorded lots of videos, restarted the computer, and it worked quite happily then. So, again, filling that's a lot of black. So I am holding the very edge of the paper with my fingers as well on my right hand because the tape just wouldn't hold this. But this is truly fantastic and good fun. Again there's the darker tone going over onto the top of a hat just lightening off as we come to the edge and just building that tone up again now sharpen the pencil again and See, I'll just snap the tip off straight away. It's just so, so soft. But I want that darker tone coming over. So now this kind of woolly bit on the front that comes around at the base of a hat. I'm just drawing a load of squiggles literally just squiggles going in the direction that it'll kind of curve but still squiggling and it gives us the kind of shape that we need so now if I just come in with the side fill in that tone we got that kind of knitted effect and that's looking rather good again using the soft side of the pencil you can fill in the hat brim
and the tone just gets a little bit lighter as we come up to the edge here. And then we want a little highlighted bit. So we can just darken the tone on the thick edge of the brim. Going up. And then we just want that little darker tone above. I've just snapped it's side on. I've just snapped the side of the, the front of the pencil off because I'm pressing on so hard on the side. And there you can see we've got the, the brim of a hat looking really, really lovely. <laughs> and because we did the tone behind, that's made it stand out. But that's looking absolutely fantastic so far. So again now I'm going to come down and just sharpen the 8B pencil, being very careful because we've got this light velvet, soft tone on the little bit of lighter before it comes round. Again, I don't know if you can hear this, somebody's just kicked off with a chainsaw. So if you can hear that, that's ambient noise in the background. So, and it's just the neighbours doing their thing. So now we're bringing the dark of the collar up, being very careful. I'm using the soft side because I want this. I don't want a sharp edge, I just want the nice soft. edge going up and then we've got the jaw so here we can see we can increase that darkness going up the side of a jawline and then again the collar Coming down the back of a collar, down the back of a neck, a scarf or, I think, yeah, it's a scarf, I think. The tone all blends in into this fantastic shadow. But by framing this, in this darker, framing a face with this darker amount of tone, we now know what we need to do to finish the face off. This is the thing, these, these large areas of fantastic dark tone are just great because they're really quick or you can go really slow. You know, if you want to go hyper real, you might need to use charcoal or something to get a nice flat matte black. But I just like using the graphite pencils. I think they're fantastic. Again, I've just gone over that line at the top, but just soften the edge. And it's the top of a collar still. And here we have dark coming all the way round and just indicating where some of the dark's going to come down. Again we've got the shadow here underneath the left hand side of it. Coat trim and this is just how 
simple and impressionistic you can you can be you can see we're just starting to build up the tonal qualities and that's absolutely lovely now i'm just going to come in with the blending stump and this velvet bit on the front just softening that over and then just pushing the real dark into the paper and then over up on the brim and then the hat up at the top and this is really dark now but giving me the tonal quality that I want. I mean that just looks rich and dark. So anyway that's really good and we can just start building the details up on the face now. So now we're going to come in with a 4B pencil and I can kind of work on the face. And start bringing more definition and the darker tones that we need so I'm just softening we've got the shadows again if you squint again we've got much darker in the ear by the ear canal than the crease that comes around there we can darken that tone and then it dark crease underneath and then the crease coming down the side of a jaw by your ear so we can intensify the darkness there and then coming down the top part of her ear inside this C shape we can just increase that a little bit and then actually down on the ear lobe underneath the ear again we've got these crease lines again the, the tip of the pencil is soft and it's starting to blunt off and that allows us to do nice soft lines in the shadows creases on a neck going up to the back now her eyebrow got those fun fantastic shape so I'm just being very careful just to increase the tone as much as I need then the crease above her upper eyelid darkening that little bit above the eye, iris, the eyelash line I'm just putting a couple of little fuzzy lines in for eyelashes slightly darker line right in the corner where that curves around on the lower eyelid And then we've got these crease lines that go right into this corner of her eye. And then that shade right in the upper part of her upper eyelid comes right over. This is this D shape that we drew 
at the beginning. And then just comes off a little bit into the nose. Again, just darkening up the nostril and then where the side of the nostril joins the nose. Uh, the nose joins the cheek. Again, these creases down by a mouth. We've got all these fantastic lines. So here, coming down the cheek. So if we come from, we start up by her eye. We've got intensify the shadow underneath the upper eyelid. Just soften that. highlight on the upper eyelid and then we've got all of these crease lines underneath so we've got a bit of a V there wider V there a line comes down and around then goes up Lines going across onto the nose, and then these creases on the forehead in between her eyebrows, and actually up on the forehead. Again, all the pores on the skin. You could you could zoom in and you could do those. You could just take ages using so you know different grades of pencil and you building it up and uh, that's a personal choice but it depends how long are you prepared to do the drawing and that's what hyper real artists do they spend as i've said in all the other videos like 40 to 80 hours on a drawing Anyway, here we've got the creases underneath the nose. So we can see the shadow curves down. But we've got a couple of creases underneath coming up off the lips. And just mottling a couple of little bits down on the chin. That just indicates those little dimples in the skin. And again back to the cheek so here underneath this eye there's a V there crease line going through going all the way down the cheek but by using the softness of the pencil again here around the eye socket we've got you're drawing the shape of the actual eye socket as it curves and the creases actually help you that's a real bonus. And that's really, really starting to look quite lovely. Now, I'm going to come in with the older, dirty putty rubber and just dabbing gently underneath this right eye and we can see we've got where these creases are and going up on the cheek coming across to the nose and now you can see now that's just literally lifted the form of a face up And where all these creases are. So I'm now dabbing very gently in the eye socket, the creases in the upper eyelid, but going up at eyebrow, we've got a little highlight, but we'll just 
come back over that. I might use the brush, you know. Highlights on the centre. Again, just dabbing and using the putty rubber, you're getting these kind of little crease lines. That are in the skin and it's actually working for you. Again, right up the edge of the head, coming up the forehead. But then coming around this left lower eyelid, again just dabbing, lifting some of the pencil off. right next to the cheek edge those creases underneath the nose coming off the lips and all you're doing is just adding some three-dimensional quality to the face and you can see that's really now starting to appear off and where we put all these lines you can just put a kind of highlight line next to them and you're just dabbing on carefully now it is very bright at the moment so we, we're pulling off some of the graphite working in conjunction with the tone that we've put down before and the little lines that we've put on and that looks a bit strange and crazed right now but you'll see momentarily again right in the corner of the eye next to the tear duct so that's looking quite good now my, I'm going to use the blending stump rather than the brush you can use a cotton bud but I'm just wiping a lot of the graphite pencil off but I'm going to use the cleaner side and now everywhere where We've just been with the putty rubber that's in this shaded side. That's now softened down, but you've still got that texture of the skin. So you've still got those little highlights that we've put in with the putty rubber you've still got the texture of the skin and the same up on the forehead up here and that's absolutely fantastic so again we've got the very rugged look and I'm just pushing the pencil up on McGonagall's eyebrow. That just helps it to stand out. Now again, we've got to darken this area down, but what I'm going to do first is soften the edge here. Again, just using the blending stump. of a hair going into the hat so I'm just pushing the tone around using the blending stump and there's no real massive strong highlights but I can really soften the edge where it's next to the hat you can see already that's now knocked back 
that tone. So again, we need to darken it underneath the hat. Again, I can just really soften the edge using the blending stump all the way across. And that works for us. And again, we've just got that softer edge now. Right on. Ooh. So I'm coming back in the two right on the edge of the hair. And now I'm just coming in with a 2B pencil. Just indicating some of the hairs. Just darkening that line a little bit where it's next to the side of a forehead. Now it was so dark. Oh, I'm amazed, that's fantastic. We've got a couple of little wispy lines that have gone into the 8B. And the putty rubber did pull enough off just to indicate those. And again, that's just a little choice that you can decide to do. Now just sharpening up underneath the chin. You can see how this is all just working together to build everything up and make the tones stronger and darker. Now we're going to come in with the 4B pencil and we can see how we've got a kind of V-shape of shadow here underneath the brim of the hat coming down to McGonagall's eyebrow. So I'm just building that tone up. That needs to come all the way across. Again, I'm just being very careful and very soft. And then again, down the side of a cheek here. It's a little bit darker. And then coming down the cheek. So I'm just basically cross hatching with the soft flat part of the 4B pencil. And you can see how it's just building up the darkness again right underneath the brow of the, the brim of the hat. Just increasing that tone little by little. And as I always say it's far easier to increase tone than it is to take it away. And that's what you need to do. So again, coming up the dark side of a cheek. Top of the ear we can darken down. Again, because you're cross-hatching, it just darkens the darker bits down, but leaves the highlighted bits of the ear looking like an ear. So, underneath the upper eyebrow, eye socket, sorry, curve coming down, this tone coming across a cheek. And here we've got a triangle of shadow just by the edge and then that comes down to the lower part of the chin, got that reflected highlight and then that darker line leaving that little bit of reflected highlight underneath. And these creases that go up the side, 
with a little bit of shadow going up. Again, intensifying the shadow, we've got a little kind of reflected highlight here, just down the side of a cheek. That's McGonagall. That is absolutely lovely. This shadow here, we've got this triangle here caused by the nose. Again, I'm using the tip very, very gently. And it's just building up the tone for us. And this is the thing with doing a portrait. You can do as much or as little as you want. So now on this side, I'm just increasing the shadow in that upper part of her upper eyelid. Then where that goes over. And the lower eyelid, we've got these creases coming round. Then go off into the highlight. Darkening that eye. And straight away you can see that's really lifting the portrait off for us. And I love... Like I say, I love doing these kind of cross-hatching bits because it's just so nice. And showing you the techniques with the smooth on, say, Ariana Grande and the BTS guys, you can just do it with cross-hatching. But just smoothing it out, you can kind of look and you can see how people do the photorealistic drawings. But I love, really love... Just building tone up with pencil like this. Across the front of her forehead, again, we've got this kind of W here. It's like a bat or a butterfly. Darker shadow in that crease and that crease. Again, just increasing darkness in the eyebrow, those creases in the skin. That's looking absolutely fabulous. So again, just coming in. Dappling the skin to get that kind of old, you know, old lady, old gentleman skin effect. You can just dapple it using the putty rubber and then smooth it down. So here we've got a little bit going up to the side of the head. You can see you've just got these shapes appearing. And this is where you can just keep working and working. And coming back in with the blending stump. Just softening those tones now. And that's amazing. Really, really lovely. So anyway, we're going to do the details next on the shirt, uh, the shirt, her cloak and the blouse and underneath the scarf and then kind of final details. But that's looking absolutely fantastic.
hope you're having fun because this is really good so back in <clears throat> with an 8b pencil and we're now going to do some very quick work on McGonagall's clothes. So we're going to be using the 8B and the 4B. And I just want these darker parts just putting in quickly. And these are just going to be the indicators for where. Oh, there goes the tip. It just snapped off. I don't know if you heard that. Oh. When I used to have the microphone, it used to pick up everything. Uh, but it was a bit too far away. And so the gain was up and that meant when lockdown happened, we were getting lots of ambient noise in 2020. <clears throat> so I've moved it. So I don't even know how much of the scratching you can hear of the pencil anymore. So again, with this 8B, We've got a lot of dark. I'm, going, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going to do this really quick. So you can see how when you're looking at the face, if you do stuff quick elsewhere, it, it just blends in. So here we've got a triangle of dark. And we've got these little lines going up on that bit of velvet. Just curves that go around coming up the edge of a scarf. Again, we've just got to make that dark fit in. And that's looking really nice. So again, it's, it's, there's a lot of dark in this. And so you can see I'm just putting the indications of where shadows might be. And if you want to do this exact, then you've got to draw each of the creases first. You've got to do all of the lines, like we put the outlines down. And you've got to make it all absolutely exact. But I can tell you now that all of this fabric with all of these folds will take you a long time so here we've got so you've got a c-shape there and i'm just literally wiggling it really quickly and just being impressionistic got a darker shadow into the center line and then the dark shadows i'm not going to the edge of the page just being nice and impressionistic And that's a lot of the dark in. So now we've got obviously this highlighted bit here. I'm just trying to find the flatter part. There we go. It's darker down the bottom and on this left hand side of a blouse. And we've got little lighter bits going up. And it's darker where it goes to the edge there. And then we come over just to this light bit right on the corner. The 
of the crease in the center and we've got a nice dark patch coming right underneath the chin going up onto the edge of the scarf That's looking really good. Now again, we've got the blending stump. And it just means I can just push the pencil around. Again, dark putty rubber. Those kind of little highlights on the top of the folds where that comes up. Little one down there. And then you can just blend it back in carefully but you've got that kind of nice light velvety effect and there we've got the center of McGonagall's shirt all done now coming in with the 4B we're going to do I'm using the soft side again and we're doing the edge of her arm again this is darker but not too dark so I'm indicating the darker points are already on the collar or the seam of the cloak or coat and then again these are just little lines that are going up and just working for us so again now these ones that are coming off to the side working from the top again I'm just using the soft side of the pencil it's a little bit blurred you know out of focus in the in the reference image which is fine well, that just works for us now just bringing these details in you can see we're just elevating the coat with just some little nice lines we're just being impressionistic and I'm just indicating these and they're following the curve the shape of a jacket around the sleeve and then just come in with a darker tone just zigzagging and we've got this tone coming up the edge Again, just darkening it down. A little bit of shadow next to that one. Now we're coming with the putty rubber. And just put a little highlight on these little darker lines. That's just really good and again you come over using the blending stump you've still got the highlights but we've got the darker tone on the edge of a sleeve we can push that around and you can see there now we've got a really well-defined 
left shoulder. So now if we come with the 4B and do the same, in fact, we need the 8B first. I'm just following the tracking that we put down. I say just want kind of three lines. Like a dark center line. Again, I'm twisting, it, it blunts very quickly. It's already quite low down, but I'm twisting this 8B pencil a lot so that I can get the dark shadow lines on these kind of three lines of track of embroidery. And then again, the same. I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm literally just putting wiggles down now. And that's kind of going into the dark. You can see that really is just some wiggly lines. And just indicating where those dark Apaches are. And then we can just come in with the, I'm just using the 8B pencil to get the much darker tone down. Might need to sharpen it. We've got this darker tone that's coming through here, right to the edge. Well, I'm not going right to the edge of the paper, but the edge of the drawing. And we're just indicating where the darker passages of shadow are in the slight folds. And here we've got a darker one, so I'm putting a good thick line right next to the embroidery. And then I can soften it off. So before we put too much in, just using the putty rubber, just nicking some little highlights in the embroidery. Again, because this is just so dark, that's why I'm using the darker putty rubber, because it's already got a lot of pencil in it. And it just means I don't have to worry about dirtying up a clean putty rubber. So like I say, once you've used one and you've got it kind of, you know, used a lot, that's a real bonus for you. Again, just crisping up around some of those highlights. Now softening that tone down the edge. I'm just using the blending stump to just push that tone around. The same going down the jacket here. And that's looking rather fantastic. I am going to have to sharpen it because I just need, oh, the tip just snapped off. I just need some more, a lot, I don't want to risk. If you go too low and you hit the pencil wood, you'll scratch into your paper and that's not a good thing. So I just need that darker tone there. So I can just push this around, bring the darker tone down, the edge of the collar. Again, the side of that shadow. Again, I'm using the soft part of the pencil. Just trying to blend off some of the harder lines. 
And here we have, like I say, just the dark going up into the neck and the scarf around McGonagall's neck. And that is now looking really lovely. And again, this is where you're just working your tones together. Just to bring it into a very uniform tonal quality. So again, I'm just cross hatching over everything that we've done. On the left sleeve, shoulder and collar. And there you can see that brings that tone together. So that's now coming up just to final details. That's really, really looking lovely. So again, I'm back in with the 4B pencil. Again, I'm just cross hatching over. I'm getting a bit lighter now down this part of a cheek. So I'm just trying to bring some unity over those highlights that are pulled off. And again, you can see we've got that nice shape of shadow. And then we come up to the upper part of a head. Again, underneath the brow of a hat, we've got this little V shape coming down to above a right eyebrow. Above the right eyebrow we've got tone. And again, I'm literally I am just literally scribbling this around to get the tones that I want. <coughs> Excuse me. So now coming down from the nose across underneath this cheek, this highlighted part. There you can see that's now giving us the highlight that we want on this little corner. And we've got this kind of shadow on the cheekbone here that's looking really lovely. And then coming down the cheek. And then by the side of a mouth, the shadow right underneath the lower lip. And we've got this triangle here coming down to the bottom of a chin. Now again, I'm crisping up where collar is right next to the skin but going into the soft shadow that's looking absolutely lovely this curve underneath the nose Then coming across the lip a little bit. Bottom part of the chin. Again, this is just all with the 4B pencil. You could use the 2B. Next to the nose on this eye. Remember, we've got no line for the nose here. Your mind is actually just seeing it. So now I'm just, because I just need to get a little bit closer. And 
around the eye, the details around the eye. And I'm just looking at the reference, just fuzzing that out a little bit. Eyebrow coming over and across, right into that corner. Again, this darker band of shadow caused by the brim of a hat coming across and you've kind of got a reflected highlight between this shadow and the brim of a hat so you just increase the shadow that's underneath and that is looking absolutely fantastic I'm just sharpening my pencils up that's the 4B the 8B and the 2B and we'll come in I'm just going to come in with the putty rubber now this is the clean one I'm going to be very careful I've pinched it to a nice fine point and I'm just pulling off all the pencil that I need to in these very highlighted areas so coming right up underneath the nose that diagonal line caused by a cheek then this shadow I'm just dabbing it off a little bit where it comes under again right on the edge of her head on the corner of her eye socket how that comes over top of her eye the upper part of that lower eyelid there's a highlight right in tear duct so I just pulled that out a little bit and again some of the creases on that upper eyelid now the top of the nose just comes over a little bit and we've got these stronger highlights right on the top and you can see that's really lifting her face up now edge of a cheek upper part of a lower lip and these creases down below a lip right to the edge Are absolutely fantastic again on the upper part of a lip I can just pull those highlights out a little bit so Again, just dabbing on a cheek, coming in with the blending stump, just that little bit, softening those back in. I'm going to use the dirty putty rubber so they don't pull off too much. just to raise up the highlight on the upper part of a right eyebrow and that bit going into the center <sighs> and 
and that's looking rather nice. Just I'm just literally just going to do some fiddling. So these really are. This is just fiddling because it's like, how far do you want to go with? all of the detail so again you can, you can just keep going because there's so much that you can do so much wonderful character in all of the creases and lines of dame maggie smith who plays minerva mcgonagall so i'm just looking and these these are just my little final fiddles so again here we've got this kind of butterfly shape i'm just adding little lines then this highlighted bit again that's just bringing that tone down a little bit but even though this is a 2b pencil I'm going over where I've put 4b and 8b it just increases and builds the tone ever so slightly And this is the joy of graphite pencil. You can do this and develop a really, really lovely drawing. And this is what I love sharing with you guys. The joy of creating something like this. Again, these are just little details that I'm adding at the end. Just softening that highlight down a little bit. That's better. Over the cheek. Again, this is just simple cross hatching. Crisping up around that eye. Now I am going to come in with the 4B. I'm going to be careful. I want to increase those shadows and the crease lines around that eye. And you see that just gives it that little bit of extra definition. Again the same thing, the shadow caused by the hat and down the edge of the cheek. And as I keep on saying, it's easier to add than it is to take away. And around that ear, the ear is very, you know, it's very soft around that ear. But you can see it and you're actually seeing an ear shape. And that was something that I didn't notice. The highlights on a nose in the centre. So I'm just coming in with the blending stump. Just softening those down after putting those in. Again, same on the little highlights as we come around because the stronger highlights are on this side. Again, this is just Pushing that tone around a little bit. I'm just softening up on the hat. Darker underneath that eye. Again, this is this is literally just total faff. But this is what you do when you get to the end of a drawing. You think, oh yeah, I could. Oh, I can just push that bit there and do this bit there and and that's it. Do you know 
I'm going to call that a day. There we have Professor McGonagall completed. I hope you've enjoyed that and we'll do more Harry Potter and more other subjects into the future. But anyway, there's Professor McGonagall and I'll see you in the next drawing lesson. Take care. Ta-da.